Okay. Question four says um, that we're going to show that this integral equals half ln2. There's actually a clue, isn't there? Whenever we see a natural log appearing in our answer, the clue is somewhere along the line we're expecting to get to a point where the top is the derivative of the bottom. Because um, it's going to involve a natural log, and that's, that's how that arrives. Right, we'll look at this and we see what we can do with it. There should be a couple of things that leap out at us as we look at this. Um, I don't know why I'm writing the question. And we, we've got to train ourselves to recognise these things. We've learnt the trig identities from core 3. Uh, and so amongst that, we know that sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. That's one of the ones that we know that, that just kind of pops straight into our head. And look, it's there, isn't it? 2 sine x cos x. So that's, that's 1 plus sine 2x on the bottom. That's the first thing to recognise. We also know that we've got cos 2a is cos squared a minus sine squared a. Oh, instead of the minus. And cos squared a minus sine squared a we write in another couple of forms. We write that as being, well if cos is 1 minus sine squared, it's 1 minus 2 sine squared a. We also write 2 cos squared a minus 1. But we, we don't necessarily need that right now. That's the one that would look. And there it is. 1 minus 2 sine squared x is cos 2x. So they're there for us. We should straight away spot that we've got a couple of identity things going on here. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x is cos 2x. And 1 plus 2 sine x cos x is 1 plus sine 2x. And that's the crucial thing to get to that point. Then you've got to spot something else, and it's something that we should always be looking for. There was a clue in the natural log that you know we don't have to do anything fancy with, with what's going on here. We just have to notice that if you differentiate 1 plus sine 2x, you get something closely related to cos 2x. If you differentiate 1 plus sine 2x, the 1 goes to 0. Differentiate sine 2x, and we get 2 cos 2x. Remember? So if this, if this had had a 2 up there, it would have been a perfect, we called it Craig's rule, didn't we? The perfect thing at the top is the derivative of the bottom. The 2 wasn't there, so we need to think about there being a half in front of the whole thing as well to balance that out. So this now becomes equal to a half. The top is the derivative of the bottom, so it's the natural log of the modulus of 1 plus sine 2x between 0 and pi by 4. Of course, between 0 and pi by 4, sine is positive. Between 0 and pi by 2, sine is positive. So we don't need the modulus sign because that's always positive in that range that we're looking at anyway. So we work this out, we've got the half of um, what would it be? Natural log of 1 plus sine 2x. So that's the natural log of 1 plus sine pi by 2. Sine pi by 2 is 1, isn't it? Take away the natural log of 1 plus 0. And we're there, aren't we? Okay. And it's a bit weird, isn't it, to think we've just done a five mark question and I only wrote the question out and then wrote three lines of working before the, the answer, which was an answer given anyway. So it's one of those things that you either know what you're doing with it and you get five marks, or you blunder around not spotting that these fit into those true identities. Go close to zero. That's maths.